You've got to make the people happy, Elliot. Get more views. People love to see that. This is a wig. How do you make one of the world's best-selling EVs even better? Well, of course, you just chop the roof off. But have they lost the magic of the original? Well, there's only one way to find out. This is the Wuling Mini EV Cabrio, and this is the Fully Charged Show. Like the Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia, on March the 11th and 12th. You often hear the words cult classic bandied around cars such as the Mini and the Beetle. But I think what Wooling have done in just a few years is create a cult classic with their Mini EV. And when this launched at the Shanghai Motor Show last year, it really did turn heads. And the question was, are they really going to produce a convertible version? Yes, yes they are. And it's right behind me. But do you think this is more my style and it's got Elliot written all over it? Or is this car a bit more of Jack's style? Well, let's find out. I mean, just look at it. It's so cute looking. In fact, it's so cute. I just want to hug it. In fact, I'm going to hug it now. Oh, Brian, Brian, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I promise I won't hug the car anymore. But you can tell on a serious note that Wu Ling, with all of the cash that they've made from their hardtop version, have really thought about this in a different way. There's a lot more practicality. There's more storage space. It's safer. They've really completely re-engineered this car to make it something very different. And let's not forget that this is a collaboration between GM, who make the three-ton Hummer EV, which is a world away from this one, SAIC, who own MG, and Wuling. However, there's one rather large size elephant in the room, and that's the price, because the original was the cheapest EV in the world when it came out at 30,000 RMB. This one, is three times as much, 99,900 RMB. But I do think it's worth every penny. We're now gonna do, we're gonna do the wig test, which is a very scientific and very important test to do in a convertible car. So here I have a wig I bought this morning for about 10 pounds. And I'm gonna wear a wig because for science, for science, for science, yes. Now, it's quite a comfortable wig. I don't wear wigs, I, I don't know anything about them, how, but how do I look? How do I look? Now, the wig test is obviously very important when you own a convertible. Perhaps you do have a wig, and you need to make sure when you're buzzing along very quickly that it doesn't go flying off in the wind. So that's what we're gonna do here in the car park. We're not gonna do it on public roads, but we're gonna do it in here. I've got quite a long, length of road let's see how fast we can go before the wig goes flying off so let's go maybe it's a bit of a hot day i need to get some air under there i'm sitting up quite high let's see what happens how do i look horrific good <laughs> are you ready foot flat to the floor oh <laughs> it's still staying on there so i think this really does pass the wig test and i look absolutely horrific right Wig test passed, let's go for a drive. Now the problem with driving in a city like Shanghai is there's a lot of racket and it doesn't smell very nice. This is definitely not a city, city car. You've got to live in a green city. City which doesn't have all this horrific traffic. And we are driving at rush hour. Uh, obviously not ideal conditions at all, but I can tell straight away that people are going to love driving these. They're absolutely fab. 
I've got plenty of space in here. It feels really comfortable. I've got absolutely no complaints. So in those moments of peace when there's no big diesel trucks next to us, I can really see the appeal of this car. Like, it's such a nice day today. It's about 26 degrees, the sun is shining. You can just stick your hand out, floating along. We're just cruising at 60 kilometers an hour. Wow, this is just such a fab experience. And usually you have to pay a fortune for a convertible. But with this, 100,000 RMB, there or thereabouts, you really do get so much of an experience for your money. So acceleration by any means is not fast. It carries over that same weedy little electric motor from the other one, but this one is a little bit more powerful. Doesn't matter, really don't care. I care about how I feel in here and how I look to everyone else around me, which is obviously absolutely fab. He was looking. <laughs> We're going to see a lot of that. Uh, now, some of the annoyances have been carried over as well. So it's not super practical. There's nowhere to hold my phone for navigation. There's no navigation in this. There's no center screen, just a couple of touch buttons, fine for the price. Um, but I do miss a couple of those luxuries. The pedals are completely in the wrong area, really, for me. That accelerator pedal, and I'm not kidding, is right in the middle of this car. That's not ideal. The brakes are very vague. The steering's very vague. The accelerator's very vague. But like I said, absolutely none of this matters because I feel like a king and I'm really enjoying driving around Shanghai in a car like this. But unfortunately, this is not a car to be driving around in Shanghai. A car like this won't be allowed to drive in Shanghai because it's too small. They've banned these small cars from the roads. You're only allowed large cars over four meters and over a certain price. So you can't get this one in the city. And there's clearly been an upgrade on the interior because this just feels a bit more refined than the original. Some of the really nasty plastics have gone. There's this really lovely kind of white finish on the dashboard and down here as well. I mean, it still feels quite cheap and quite basic, but I mean, this is a car less than 100,000 RMB. It does come with a big safety feature. It comes now with two airbags, one for the driver and one for the passenger. That's a big improvement. And the safety doesn't stop with the airbags. It stops back here with the rollover bars. So it has two rollover bars. The car has been rollover tested. Apparently it's very safe. Um, you just don't want to be too much smaller than me because then your head will start sticking out of the roof. So yeah, it does have that. You know, the rest of it is very basic. You know, we still have an old school handbrake, which is fine. Electric windows, great. The simple dial down here just feels a little bit flimsy and not great it's okay to the touch but it doesn't really matter in fact none of this really matters because it's what it's like to drive and the driving experience that a tiny little micro ev with no roof can give you Now, when you're driving this at, at low speed as we are now, 20 kilometers an hour, there is a, a sound that you can hear. Now, on the first model, you could hear the whine of the electric motor, which was, uh, let's say, a little bit irritating. But with this, because you've got this, this roof like this, you can't hear that at all. Now, with the roof up, it's obviously a bit quieter, but you can still hear the whir of the electric motor. Again, it's not built for to Rolls Royce standards at all. It's built for fun, for driving around. They're looking. He's looking, they're looking, they're looking. Everyone is looking at this car and taking photos. So this is not a powerful car, 110 Newton meters of torque. We're going through a tunnel and 30 kilowatts of power from that tiny little electric motor at the back. 
so definitely not going to win any speed records but it does pass the wig test as we saw earlier on now we're heading to a different part of the city but i can tell you now that everyone is looking at this car because it's so unique it's like oh it's one of those small wooling cars but it's got no roof how cool is that Last time on the Wuling Mini EV hardtop version, the boot space was laughable. I couldn't even fit a sheet of paper in there, but this time I've got two sheets of paper. So let's see if they will fit in this boot. Slight problem. You don't access the boot through here. We have to go through the inside. So let me show you where I can put my two pieces of paper. Now, you have to go behind the seats and there's this rather nifty looking zipped bag which if you open reveals your 180 litre boot which has your charger in it and a few other bits and bobs in there so that's how you access the boot which is very unusual but at least you do have a boot before this was where the two very squished passengers set so again this one is a little bit more practical than the hardtop version now You'd think the roof would take up a lot of space, but it doesn't. So let's find out a bit more about that cabrio roof. So to build a convertible, you need some serious engineering because as soon as you remove the roof, you're left with a wobbly pan of metal. So they've completely re-engineered this car. But in talking about this roof, this is an electronically assisted roof. It's not 100% electronic, because you need to unlock it yourselves, but it takes just six seconds to let the roof go down. So all I need to do is turn this handle here manually, quite easy to unlock it, and then just press the button, and off it goes. Despite all of its shortcomings, I really can't find much fault with this car. What Wooling have done is created something which is so fun, something so enjoyable and for such a good price. And Jack, you can keep your dirty mitts off of this. This is mine. <laughs> but on a more serious note, what Wooling have done is really got 500,000 people into electric cars, perhaps for the first time ever. And for that, they should be applauded. But with this, they've created a halo car, a convertible, something fun that fans of the brand can get behind. So that's all we have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We have plenty more episodes coming from China very soon. The sun is going down, so I'm going to go off into the sunset. Enjoy the rest of the day. See you later.